Hello and welcome back to Second Take Movies, the podcast where we give movies a second look, a second chance, a second take, if you will. I am your host, Preston Jenkinson, and joining me, as always, is my co-host, Jake Twido. I don't know what that has to do with Harry Potter. You just clipped everything. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, I'm looking at those waveforms, son. Heck, yeah. What up, boy? You, you clipping my meters on my device and on the program here so take your meters and put them into the eaters <laughs> we are back with our continuation of the harry potter franchise with the yates version son this is when the stuff gets good this is the the best of it the next four movies like these yeah. four movies coming are the best they are i mean like it is wild of yeah how good this is and it's also wild that this guy did fantastic beasts and well yeah well i blame the writing i don't blame him i blame jk in the writing on that one um yeah joke rolling <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, let's laugh yeah. at the billionaire um an idiot yeah the story of the order of the phoenix uh with their warning that lord voldemort's return scoffed at harry and dumbledore are targeted by the wizard authorities as an authoritarian bureaucratic bureaucrat slowly seizes power of Hogwarts. I yeah. It's a good movie. Yeah. I had I had more commentary, but I just stopped like Yeah. This is when you really get the like, oh the Ministry of Magic or the government mm -hmm. kind of suck. They're, They're doing the dumb stuff. I don't know, like you're a South Carolina guy. You went to school in South Carolina. My parents were teachers, so I feel like I can say some stuff, but like, I feel like our education sucks compared to others. Well, my, my sister is also an educator within the system, and she would say that we have some of the highest standards. That's why it's so low. But she could explain all that better than I could. I'm an idiot that talks I'd about... I'd say F, F the government, <laughs> power to the teachers. Um, I'm an idiot that talks yeah. into a microphone every week, so, you know. <laughs> Dude, but you know what, Preston? You know how to plug it in. You know how to hit record. It's a lot better. That's true. Uh, <laughs> the positive and the negative reviews. Let's just segue on out of that conversation. So dumb. So um, dumb. Do not... T yeah, anyway. Um, the positive <laughs> review from New York Magazine, David Edelstein, says, mm. for all its propentiousness... Pretentiousness, this is the best Harry Potter picture yet. In some ways, it improves on J.K. Rowling's novel, novel, which is punishingly protracted and builds to a climactic wand off better than red, better seen than red. Again, I stray away. I'm trying to stray away as much as I can on these of book to movie, but I will flat out agree with that. Like the this is one of my favorite books. It is convoluted. Mm -hmm. It is layered overly layered like i felt like this was the point when she quit smoking crack and was like we're gonna get real no more flying birds carrying people it's real life yeah. but she's southern now but <laughs> she's southern um, now <laughs> yeah that's that's a good point i mean that, that's a pretty good yeah pretentious yeah. is the right word yeah um which david yates i think this is his like first feature film big really feature film I don't think he had anything prior to this, man. Wow, what a break. I'll, I'll double check that, but I mean, that makes sense of like, mm -hmm. he's going all out, man. He's taking chance, taking swings, what? chances. Especially What's with the, the uh, Deathly Hallows. Like, he took ooh, great I mean, he went in, in those. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. He did TV. Okay. TV, 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 TV. Yeah, he did nothing. And not, not even good TV. Like, yeah. He was just I don't like know a, how he got this movie. He had to... Uh, yeah. He was like a gun for hire for TV shows? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my filter's working. Your, your, your brain, I could see your brain went somewhere with that. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he got this, but dude, this... I mean, like, between all the movies prior to this and now, mm. 
It's a strike difference, and it's him. Okay. So. Uh, the po- negative review um, from Mick LaSalle at the San Francisco Chronicle, taken as a motion, motion picture, the new Harry comes up short, but taken as a visual aid to the experience of reading a book, the new Harry does its job. What? <laughs> That's what he wrote. That's a... Yeah, that guy's stupid. That review makes no sense. Ah, okay, I get it, but uh, he was—I think he's using the word "Harry" as the latest movie, but like, just you sound like a it's an old dude, probably. Anyway, yeah, because this says, movie kicks off so hard. It's so different. Like, there's an it is crazy instant mood shift. I love it. I forgot. I'm not like, again, I think I've said this before. Logan and I watched this. Logan, my wife, for anyone that doesn't know, because you're all, you know, so concerned about my life if you listen to this podcast. So get with it. Um, She's she's been on the show, actually on the show and in the background. uh, Yeah, the background. We got to fix that. Um, (laughs) Yeah, every other year we watch this entire series Mm -hmm. during the like fall, winter time. This year has been really different because doing this with you, it's like, I'm going to watch this a little bit harder. But this movie every year is like, oh, yeah, this is life. This isn't fairy tales anymore. Now it's like, oh, yeah, you're sitting on the swing set and this boy's going to come beat you up, boy. Yeah. That's not really the real life part. But it gets so dark, so freaking fast. And, and it's awesome. I feel like it <clears throat> It makes you feel a little sad for Dudley. A little bit. It does. And I think this is when you really start to... I think the books and the movies both. The books do a better job. Mm -hmm. Like, when you're a little kid... Okay, I'm going to... This is a personal thing here. You can clip this if you want to. So, Tyler Bradley's parents, when I was a little kid, your roommate, Mm -hmm. Tyler Bradley, Yeah, I was terrified of them. Because they were were stricter than my parents. And I didn't get that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, as an adult looking back, I'm so appreciative and thankful. But as being a child, it's like, this is scary. Not not that they were scary or anything else right. at all, but this movie is kind of that, like, I don't know the relationship I'm trying to make here with it, but, yeah. The Dudley, that entire family, all of them is like... You- you can see how oh, he became the way Harry's, he is. Yeah, and and Harry, like, older, yeah, they definitely mistreated him, did all this bull crap. Mm-hmm. But then as an adult, you're looking at it, and it's like, they're still family. Yeah. You know, I, not that it excuses anything at all, but this is where that shift happens, kind of. Yeah. I don't. The movie doesn't do as much after this with him. Not, but I wouldn't say not do. really for the parents, but more for Dudley. Cause D- yeah, him at least. Especially this, but... where. Yeah. They're hanging out in a park in the summertime. Losers. <laughs> <laughs> Harry doesn't know Nerds. what he was. Harry has no friends in the regular world, so it's like, what's he supposed to do? Yeah, him sitting on that swing set. <sighs> Poor Harry. Harry Potter. And and Dudley's beating up 10-year-olds, and Harry calls him Oh, on his God, shirt. I love that. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I, but I had to dementors. rewind it because I was like, "You tired of eating ten year olds?" I was like, "Whoa, damn!" <laughs> <laughs> Harry got jokes. Gross. Uh, Dementors mm. show up. The Dementors, yeah. And uh, Harry repels them after him and Dudley both almost die. And it, it which it's a great age. moment of like he has. It's like almost no effort to conjure a Patronus for him now. Yeah, yeah, which is wild. Yeah. Like when, when did that happen? Because the end of the last movie, obviously he's been working on it. Yeah, he's been baiting. <laughs> <laughs> magic baiting. Don't yeah, worry, yeah. magic baiting, man. But um, they get yeah, t- but you can't do magic underage, right? And he's already been which like, clipped for that once. Ridiculous. Like, yeah, this is kind of funny too. This is when you see the whole like shift of everything of it was okay harry did it earlier but now you're an enemy yeah 
what you've been telling people, you're an enemy. So therefore, no. <laughs> and so they get attacked by some uh, Dementors, uses the spell, and then this lady shows up and he's like, oh, Miss, uh, I can't remember what her name is, but he's like, Miss so-and-so. Mm. And she's like, mm, don't worry, Harry. Yeah, his neighbor his whole life. Yeah. And then he figures out, yeah, she's been Dumbledore's spy this yeah. entire time. Dumbledore had an eye on him the whole time, which, of course he would. He's Dumbledore. Which kind of crazy with this movie because he's non-existent. Right. Well, well I mean, you you but, figure out why yeah, later. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's, but. There, it's very evident he's trying to push away Harry in this movie. Like, yeah. you know, keep him at a distance. Because the, the ministry is, like, watching everything now. Um, yeah, they're yeah, and so Harry goes back, gets back to the house, and he gets a letter from the ministry saying he's been expelled immediately. Uh, but he has a hearing that he can. Uh, he does, but they didn't. They mentioned that. They didn't mention that in the letter. They just said you're expelled. Oh, they, you're right. They didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's when all the uh, the goon squad shows up because the ministry's on that bullshit. So um, yeah, the letter gets in. Yeah, you're right. The, I didn't. I don't, yeah, it doesn't. But all his buds show up, and they're going to break him out of his house. What a rad scene. It's also the first time you actually see Mad-Eye. Oh, Mad-Eye shows up. You got the uh, yeah. you got your Hag Hagrid. Hagrid? No. Who's the African dude? I don't know. He, I mean, like, he, he works for the ministry, but he's African, right? Like, uh, Yeah. I know, he's, I know he's black. I'm talking about just... Like, yeah, no, he's straight up, like, he's in African garb and everything. He's African. Okay. Yeah, um, he's rad. Uh, you got your uh, your Lupins and his woman. Uh, I can't remember her name. It is, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit you here. It's a. Uh, oh my god, Fleur de la Cour, Hestia Fleur Jones. De la Cour. Man, uh, McGonagall's a part of it. Didn't realize that. Maybe that's secret. She's in the Order of the Phoenix. Kingsley Shackbolt. Shacklebolt. Who's that? Um he wanted to see a picture. Guys, can we can we get a picture here? I thought that was the African guys, Kingsley. It doesn't sound um, like his name. Mm, we suck. You get Tonks, who's Tonks. a shapeshifter. She married Lupin. That's right. They don't address that she's married to Lupin. No, but they infer they're in a relationship. Okay. Mr. Weasley, Bill Weasley, Charlie Weasley, and Molly Weasley. But the, that, that's, not, that's, then, not, that's not the list of pe all the people that came to pick him up, is it? No, that's the whole Order of the Phoenix. Sorry. Where, like, they, they assembled their brooms or, like, conjured their brooms, and then... It's, uh, I think it's Tonks... African guy, okay, the guy from Africa. That's terrible. Uh, Matt, I, yeah, R Ron, Hermione, Hagrid's not with them. No, and Matt, I, I think that's it. I love Matt, I's um, broom. <laughs> His, yeah, it was that's the coolest character, like. But also, yes. they did that because he's an he was an he's an the actor's an old guy, and he just they just put him on the green screen and sat him on that thing because <laughs> he couldn't sit on a broom like the rest of them. Um, so we we go flying through London, and somehow no one sees this. That's my only nitpick of this Which, movie. Nitpick, but I think kind of like the last this one. Yeah, uh, sorry, the African guy is Kingsley Shacklebolt. Hmm. That is him. There you go. Um, Kingsley sounded right. The last name didn't. Yeah. I love that you're starting to get like the real world at this point. Mm -hmm. Like they go to the Ministry of, Mag Ministry of Magic later. You're in London. They go to London late. I, I just loved like, all right, here's our world. Yeah. So, so we, uh, we, they go back. Yeah. We so take off to London and then we, we, End up at um, Sirius Black's house. Man. That I, was folded into a building that somehow no one felt moving apart when they 
conjured it. Nope. Shh, nope. We're not going to do it. Nope. <laughs> Nope. Serious Black <laughs> is my favorite, man. This movie sucks because it's where you get a lot, but, you know, the end. Yeah. But, he shows up again, um, though. Yeah. Yeah, he does. What a what a good actor. Yeah. What a good actor. What a good role. I mean, yeah. You also understand how rad Arthur Weasley is in this movie. Oh, yeah. Him. The, I've, I've said this all along. Like, Arthur and um, his wife are two of the best people ever. Yeah. And oh, you know, uh, yeah. This this is where watching this after watching everything else, you start to remember the end. You start to remember like other things, and it's like this sucks. It's good, but it, this sucks. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Arthur is important because he takes Harry to his hearing, to where you find out after he walks through, sees uh, Lucius Malfoy being creepy behind a door. They get in the elevator, and uh, Kingsley tells them, like, hey, your stuff has moved, man. Yeah. So he's in the Grand Inquisitor thing, which it's, like, I think Arthur brought him, like, five hours early. Yeah. And the thing happens in ten minutes now. Yeah. So it's, it's like, oh, yeah, they're trying to screw you. It's a kangaroo. Job. It's I have this in my notes. It's a kangaroo court. Like, That's my favorite word in the world, man. <laughs> Daggum, kangaroo court. I can't tell you how many times I use that saying. <laughs> kangaroo court, but whoever the like kind of attractive older lady, wizard witch is, that was for Harry. Sitting off to the side. Yeah, she yeah. wins, ma'am. Yeah. Whoever that MILF is, let's just be honest, <laughs> right, bro? Come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Guys, hear that? He high fived me. You hear that? <laughs> Did it again. Um,. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have. A yeah, but then you get. Five thing did here. you get introduced to the like? This is my least favorite character, probably of any movie. Uh, it's up there. Umbridge is the worst thing in the world. She is the first woman that I would be unashamed to punch in the face. Dude, I'd punch her straight in the butt. <laughs> I, yeah, I hit the face. I hit the butt. But I mean, in parentheses, I also wrote, but that's the point of the character. It's kind of like Joffrey. Yeah. And no one likes Joffrey, but dude, what? And what a what a good job. Yeah. Like, she played her part, ma'am. That's, She's not going to get another job because she sucks so bad. But. De- definitely credit to the actress for, like, nailing those little mannerisms that just irk you and just, like, you're the worst. I worked with a lady that uh, was short, talked like her, and made those like <laughs> noises. Uh, she was actually my boss for a little while. I used to call her Umbridge. She quit. She quit her job because we kept calling her Umbridge. I'm proud of that. <laughs> but, yeah, the kangaroo court happens. It's like, it's so crazy. Like, you've get, gotten some hints of this, especially in the last movie with Rita Skeeta. Yeah. Whatever her name yeah. is. Like, yeah, people are against Harry and Dumbledore. You don't understand it until now of, you know, it's the government versus the people. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the right tie-in there, but that, I mean, that's what's happening. Pretty much. And Dumb- Yeah, and Dumbledore comes in because he has a witness. It's Harry's neighbor. She fends for him. You get a vote, and Harry wins, but Dumbledore disappears. He runs off, and it's kind of heartbreaking. But uh, you know, with with a beard like that, you gotta twirl it sometimes. That's right, <laughs> right. Um, but that's where you kind of get the idea. I don't remember if it's after this or before, but Sirius Black tells him like Dumbledore's look. I mean, the Voldemort's looking for an object. He's looking for a weapon. He didn't have it before. He needs it, which helps later. But they go to Hogwarts. Man, I can't remember the name of the creepy horses. Uh, I can't either. Polygmans? Something with a P. Yeah. But but essentially, uh, you meet Luna. Luna Lovegood. Do you like Do you like Luna? She's fun. She's funny. I don't like her, but she reminds me of so many nice, weird people in I, my life. I wish way more people could be as self-aware as she is. Yeah. It's where I'm like, I don't like this character, but at the same time, I'm like, 
no, I kind of wish I was surrounded by this person. Yeah. That's it. But I mean, again, actress, what a dope job. Like you made that character real, but they, uh, introduced those, uh, dead horses that you, you found out later. If you've not seen someone die, you don't see them, which another indicator of this is about to get dark. Yeah. Like it's bad. Uh, but yeah, the invisible carriages aren't invisible, it turns out. But you find out that uh, they get there, they have the normal opening day ceremonies, you know, Dumbledore's being a Dumble yeah. doof. And uh, they've appointed <laughs> Dolores Umbridge as the defense against the dark arts, which I kind of love the running joke that Snape's never going to get it when he does. But yeah. So Umbridge sucks. Um, Hagrid's gone mm-hmm. for PTO. Yeah. Things so, move kind of quick. I don't remember. Nothing really elaborate happens other than people hate Harry. Seamus, whoever Seamus is, like what a little dick. Yeah. It's, um, you know, he's, he's, I think he's, it's, he's supposed to be a representation of what everyone else feels in this world. Like what, yeah. what, what a lot of the parents were saying, like, yeah. And, and to be fair, Cedric Cedric Diggory died. And no, no one knows no why because no one's told them and Harry was there. All, yeah, all the information so. they have is is Harry Potter, and you know everything happens to him. So they're like, eh, I don't know about this guy. Yeah, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now what a great message of you can't trust the news. The news is a machine and it needs like, to die. Dude, anyway. this this Daily Prophet <laughs> thing is like just a tabloid. Yeah, yeah, but that is the news for them. Mm-hmm. Just like That's all, apparently all run by the government as well. That's yeah, not good. This is some DM, B for Vendetta bullcrap yeah. here, man. Um, but good for Ron for sticking up for Harry because after being a little Dude, bitch in the last movie, Ron gets a dick in this movie. Son, he grows a pair. Mm-hmm. He's ready to f. But like seriously, this is when he's like, "Yeah, I'm cool. I can think on my own. Yeah, I'm gonna be awesome." This is when I like Ron's always been a good friend. This is when it's like, oh, he's rad. Yeah. He's not just a friend. He's cool. Say so that with Hermione. Kinda. Uh yeah. Yeah. I'll go with that. Um Yeah. So, hey, everyone hates Harry. A lot of stuff happens, but the big important thing is uh the first class with Umbridge, they get state sponsored textbooks. Yeah. Which I I don't know, I just love I love that stupidity because now we're going to talk about movies. I'm not going to go into it, but uh, (laughs) Harry gets like suspension and has to come after class for talking the truth. You get some dark crap, man. He has a magic quill that etches words in his hand and the ink is blood. Which she's just trying to, to get him. Like the whole point of that is like, she wants him to go to Dumbledore to start something. Yeah. Yeah. She wants him to break and yeah. go. Cause, she, Cause apparently the ministry thinks that Dumbledore is making an army. Yeah. Which. So st- and that Dumbledore yeah. wants to become the minister of magic and take over. And no, he's just wants his boyfriend back. <laughs> um, sorry. So yeah, it cuts anything he writes cuts into his skin and he's like, no, nah, I'm going to deal with it. That's what she wants. I play in her hands. She's just crazy. But it's wild, dude. Dumbledore's gone from this movie, kind of. Yeah. She just keeps getting more and more power. Mm-hmm. And eventually, they... I don't know what leads up to all this, but they figure out we need to actually learn some defense against the dark arts. And uh, Hermione and Ron... Because they won't let them do spells Harry. in class. Yeah, yeah, there's no spells, but sh- so stupid. Yeah. They uh they go and form Dumbledore's army, which y'all is stupid. What are y'all doing? <laughs> call it like <laughs> poo poo pee pee meeting yeah, or just something. Call it something else. Like But they but go you get the room for requirement, which is pretty rad. Yeah, Neville stumbles upon the room of requirement. Also, Neville all of a sudden becomes useful in this movie. Neville like, is the best in this movie. Yeah, and in the book, like, 
I think it's this movie where Harry's like, I'm the chosen one, but actually maybe it's Neville. Yeah. The movie doesn't go into that. The book does. Uh, sorry, I'm doing book to movie, but Neville is way more important in the book. Yeah, I mean, it's just like they, oh, he might be the one that they kind of the have the about. they kind of have the same birthday, and his parents were killed around the same time, and yeah. he does end up like cutting Nagini in half, which kills Voldemort in the end. Yeah, Nagini. Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, Harry's just over here like balling out for that Cho Chang. Oh yeah, <laughs> but Cho Cho giving him eyes, and he he giving them right back. She's but yeah, but she's just all about like you saw Cedric die. What was that all about? Let me make out about it. <laughs> um, but it, it, so again, this movie it kind of sucks. Again, I'm not trying to do book movie. It's a long movie, but they put so much into this movie. I mean, it's just like, mm -hmm. the, from here on out, it's done. Yeah. It's over. Um, next big like scene is Harry wakes up in night sweats because he sees Arthur Weasley getting killed. Yeah. Or hit. But he's the one hitting him. With this, with the snake, Harry is a yeah. Harry's a creep, bro. Which um, I don't know if we know at this point that Harry is. No, we don't because no, we don't. The prophecy lets you know that possibly there's a thing. Um, but no, you don't know he's a Horcrux yeah. at this point. Next movie, you know, you don't even get that until the very last. So. So that that's kind of like a clue that he is connected to Voldemort that way. Yeah, which I don't know. Pretty pretty good job of like you understand there's a connection, but you don't understand why. And they kind of give a, a um an explanation. At least Snape does. He's like he used to get into people's minds and make them see things, and what. They don't. They haven't addressed that Snape used to be a Death Eater, right? Not Is that yet. common knowledge yet. I, th mm. I mean, I mean, obviously Dumbledore knows, but like Harry doesn't know that. I don't think anybody does know. Um, okay. I think he he becomes a Death Eater after Dumbledore asks him to after Harry's parents die, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think Lily's death causes him to spiral. Yeah, it was pretty rough on him. And he yeah, does he does a great hell? job of when he's doing that training with him of how to keep Voldemort yeah. out of his mind. You, like Alan Rickman does a great job of like having this look on his face like I hate this kid and his dad, but I want to keep him alive because I loved his mom so much and th there's just that um Oh, what do you call it? Conflict within. Yeah, I don't. I don't think these movies are worth crying over. I cry when Sirius dies at the end of this movie. Yeah. I don't know why. I think because I love him so much. Well, it's, it's kind of weird. It's just unceremonious, really. Yeah, he, I mean, he just dies. He gets hit with a spell and then gets swept up in that thing. Sure. Um, and and later we'll talk in other movies, but like. So when you really, this is the first movie where you're like, oh, Snape is something. Mm -hmm. But he, that whole thing happens, but it, it's kind of weird, which maybe it points out. Dumbledore tasks him to uh, start trying to help Harry with occlumency, mm -hmm. occlumency, whatever, the control of his dreams or thoughts. And it, you know, why Snape? Why he's the potions master? So, what a weird thing. Um, the, again, there's a lot of you know what? There's no daggum. There is no Quidditch in this movie. There is not. No. Good. <laughs> yeah. Give me. A, yeah. I'm like, whoa, crap. Um, there's a lot of weird back and forth between Snape and him. Yeah. 
I know there's more that happens, and I, my brain's just going like big things, but eventually Harry gets ticked and casts the spell that he's been hearing while Snape invades his own mind and sees like, oh, your dad sucks. Yeah. Which, dude, what a... Uh, like, I'm not trying to make a comment about my dad. I don't, I don't, I haven't time traveled or anything, but like, what a weird pill to swallow of, you know, your dad yeah. might be your hero, but yeah, he probably could have been a jerk when he was younger. For most of my life, my dad was like the guy, you know? Yeah. Like, that's who I want to be like. And then, you know, you get older and, you know, you start to realize, hey, your parents are human. Yeah, I mean, and, like my, you know, Preston. I don't. You, I think you've met my dad once. Like he's a football coach. Yeah, I'm a weird music, art lover. I don't do sports. It's like I hung out with the weirdos, and my dad was a jock. Yeah, I didn't air quote that, but as an air quote. So yeah, I mean, I, that this is to me like it kind of hits home of like not that my dad's ever done anything bad. I think he's a good guy, but yeah, it's a hard thing of like. Harry's dad's dead. He's his hero. And but turns I, out I no. think it would be even worse if like you Yeah, because he gets a an image of what his dad was. Of yeah. how like he actually was. Like that would that would be even worse to see what how he actually acted and the the mistakes he made in his youth. And that's where I'm like, hey, these movies from here on out are bigger pills to swallow yeah. like that. I mean, in a good way, like, yeah. they do a good job of like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if this whole series is like a coming to age story in yeah. the end, but like, welcome to being an adult, your yeah. childhood. There's things that are wrong. Which oh, are there, fun. there's things, you know, when I was a kid that I would not want my nephews to know about or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I jumped out of a van once and yelled mother ships landing and took a dump <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> See how I made this less serious? I get an uh, award. Um, yeah, we were, get, yeah, we were getting too serious. Like, <laughs> Snape legitimately quits on them at that point, mm -hmm. which Dumbledore's gotten expelled at this point. Um, after that whole, like, he figures it out. Sorry, my notes are messed up in order, but um, when that all happens, like, They've found the whole Dumbledore's army, mm -hmm. and Dumbledore does the uh, magic clap. Get out of there, boy! That's and the the guy, the Kingsley guy, says it best. Like the dude knows how to make he an exit. Got style. <laughs> he got style. He knows how to make an exit. Uh, what sucks though is between now and then. Too sorry. The other big thing is. I, don't, I forget this every time I watch this. Sirius Black, they walk into a room in his house where this family tree's on there. There's a lot of burnt people. Mm -hmm. And then you understand that Sirius Black comes from a noble family mm -hmm. of perfection. And I think and... he got burned out of that, didn't he? What's that? He got burned out of that um, tapestry. Oh, yeah, he's burned out. He's yeah. burned out because he's different. And... Him and Bellatrix. But you found Bellatrix Lestrange, a.k.a. the estranged cousin. Yeah. I forget that's his cousin. Totally forget. Yeah, dude. Like, it's all woven in there. So, technically, he's related, to, he's related to Malfoy, then. Because Malfoy's mom is Bellatrix's sister. So yeah. Mal Malfoy's mom is also Sirius's sister or cousin. I didn't realize that. Yep. Him and Malfoy's Sorry. second cousins. Processing this for a minute. Um, but you do meet Bellatrix. Uh, what's her name? Um, the actress, Baron Cohen. Uh, why, why am I drawing a blank? Helena Bonham, Helena Bonham Carter. Carter. Yeah. She's kind of a one trick pony. She is. But that pony's a good one. Yeah, she's having fun. She yeah, she commits and she's good. Mm -hmm. I mean like phenomenal. Well, and I think this is where they start getting bigger actors and actresses. Yeah. The character is go all in, the character's dude. one note herself. So I mean Yeah. yeah only one way you can do it. Um she escapes Azkaban with nine other Death Eaters. Mm-hmm. 
they don't see the other ones or they call it out. Um, and meanwhile, but, so, the, the ministry continues to just try to shut everything up. Serious blackness at the root of all of this it, is a th- This escape was, was designed by someone who's escaped it before. It was serious black. I tell you. Well, it all comes to a head when they go to take their owls, which... Also, I let's put death. a let's put a bullet in creature's head already. Like, what a piece of shit! Oh, dude, what a loser! <laughs> I, I don't. Mm. Why is he not dead? <laughs> because I serve the house black, where the house black is for most creatures here. Um. Oh, there we go. There we go. Anyway. Yeah, that was I they, had to just mention that. <laughs> Uh, Dumbledore's gone, so what's her dump? Umbridge is the new headmaster. Yep. Uh, also, how does uh, Filch stay hired at, at Hogwarts after this? Uh, you know, I... what a creepy guy, dude. He's definitely touching some of those kids. Well, uh, you know, Dumble- Dumbledore keeps an eye on him. He's, you know, he... yeah, Dumbledore. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, you get that whole sequence. My notes are so bad, man. They're so scattered here. <laughs> They're out of order. I know they are. She's headmasteress. They're taking the owls. And the Weasley brothers decide to just middle finger this whole thing. They don't want to do school anymore. Right. And then they just fly through the thing and, and uh, make a, a fire dragon. But what a good party. But, hey, Harry's seeing a vision of serious getting killed oh yeah but it's yeah. a fake one yeah which you know it when I mean, you watch this you know like oh this one's fake yeah which they it turns out they all were they're all set up yeah they were never like a hairy head premonition it was no like i'm gonna kill arthur weasley or it's almost and it, make you feel that way so is this the part where they 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 run umbridge out of school and then uh, with the fire dragon, then she comes back somehow. They, Harry realizes what's going on, so Ron, Harry, some of those other nerds are going to try and use her flu powder in her fireplace to That's go right. to the ministry. And then she, she catches them. Up. Yeah, yeah, she catches them, and she's going to, like, kill, I mean, she's going to torture Harry. Yeah. Like, yeah, flat out, Crucio, poop and dupe. And um, Hermione's like the secret weapons in the forest, which you find out earlier, Harry had, I mean, uh, Hagrid had left to see the giants to make sure they weren't going to attack mm-hmm. with um, Voldemort, his brother, half-brother's there, so he brings them back. So Hermione's been taking care of them. So they go into the woods. Dude, I loved that whole, the centaur scene. Yeah. I was all about it. I'm yeah. like, dude, this is rad. Like, give me more of this in this series. And this is where I'm picky now of, like, this world's cool. Let me see some of this other crazy stuff. Yeah, because to go back to the book, there's more of a... The centaurs have more personality. and Yeah, and they love Harry. Yeah. That, like, Harry and them are, like, acquaintances. They're friends. And there's another sequence, I think, later... I don't know which movie it is well, now, but they're it, like... It, well, it goes Harry all the Potter way back. Respected. It goes all the way back to the first movie where he saw... That figure drinking the unicorn blood. Yep. And that's when they he first yeah. met the centaurs. Yeah, and that's where Harry's a friend of the uh halflings. Mm-hmm. I think is the right the right wording. Yeah, they're centaurs. Mintarth. Um <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> they bring <laughs> they bring Umbridge out there and uh those centaurs are gonna beat her. Yeah. I thought they were going to murder her. They probably, but well, they don't. Yeah, they she just, shows up later in the movie. She, she but. just gets roughed up a little bit. Yeah. They gets raped. They definitely. Oh, rape. God. <laughs> um. Anyways. Thestrals. Thestrals are the names of the dead horses. That's right. Yeah. It's not P. It's a T-H. Yeah. We've got so, her to Unbridge, so we're like, hey, how are we going to get to London? Yeah, and that's when you get the first... This is the first time you really get the, like... Harry wants to do this all alone. Yeah. Because he knows it's not good. And but then, he's going to have his uh, his posse. He's going to go with him. And then Neville's the like, hey, dude, you, you made is Dumbledore's army. Like, 
That's why we here. That's why we made this thing. Yeah, which Brad. I mean, like this is when this whole series really starts to like, you know, picks mm-hmm. it up. So they ride the Thestrals to London. We're not going to talk about how long it took them to ride that's, because the mile per hour is. That's not worried. Anyway, they they can uh, fly. Yeah, they find the Department of Mysteries, which is apparently nothing but prophecies, which, miles of prophecies. I love the design of oh. that room and the Ministry itself. I have a note that I wrote earlier today. To be honest, not earlier, which I hate. This is the best part of this movie. Yeah. This is the first real fight you see. Like everything else has just kind of been like, there's a big scary monster attack. And mm-hmm. this is like, oh yeah, son, I'm going to shoot them up. And um, just to see them like, like use their, their spells just like confidently and just doing what they know. Like even in like in the heat of the moment, like I think it's Jenny yeah. that hits that spell that re- reduces everything. <laughs> Yeah, and she kind of yeah. knocks everything you see, off You see Lucius Malfoy being the main person mm-hmm. that's evil before this. Which blows my mind like, oh, uh, geez. And, and Lestrange is there, too. Yeah. But yeah, Jenny does that. This is also where I've got a problem with this movie, which I think this watch through the series, there's verbal and nonverbal magic. Yeah. So the whole, like, they're always going stupefy. All those other guys are just going. Fow, fow, well, fow, I think you know, as as, as a student, you're ju- you're still learning. So I mean, like you you still have to vocally say it. Yeah, which is rad because later in that whole scene, well, okay, so no, like Harry finds the prophecy, finds out that one of them can't live without the other. Yeah, or neither can live while the other survives. Yeah, yeah, which they both have to die. It's like a hub, like a weird back and forth thing there. Yeah. Um, so they fight off these Death Eaters, which they look rad. Those masks mm-hmm. are cool. This movie really amps it up of like, like oh heck. They yeah. travel through smoke. People. Yeah. Um also the guy that plays Lucius Malfoy is so good. Yeah. Jason Isaacs, is so, I, mean, I think like, is his name. So dang good, man. He he always plays a good villain. Yeah. Poor guy. He'll never be a hero. He sucks. He's good um, at what he does. <laughs> they find a door. Not the original door. It takes them to some magical land where you can't fall or something. And they float at the bottom of that pit. They jump out of the door, and it's like a four-floor fall. Oh, yeah. And it just, it, yeah. It's where like it's like a pit and there's like a white door floating there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's some... The book gives some explanation what that is. I, the book is just like... Here you, I mean, the movie is like, here you go. Yeah. So they get overpowered so fast. Like all of them. And then the order shows uh, up. Yeah, the order shows up. Just like the Avengers. Oh, Simba! Man, that's the lamest thing I've ever done. <laughs> You got your serious black. You got your Lupin. You got Lupin's wife. You got. Give me some of that Tonks and that Mad Eye and that Kingsley. I don't think Mad Eye's Um, in this scene. No, he is. Yeah, because Mad Eye's got his his wand is his staff. That's right. Because he does the like shoves the staff on the ground and that whole fight sequence is so good. Mm -hmm. From here on out, it is stunning. Like I'm like, this is what I've wanted this entire. It's like watching the new Star Wars movies. Give me a lightsaber fight and shut up. Yeah. I don't care. Just just have a good lightsaber fight. That's yeah. it. And we, you got it here. The new but sadly Star Wars has delivered on that. But anyway. <laughs> the new one? Yeah. The new ones. Any in, like anytime there's a lightsaber fight, it's been good. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. They look good. Need more. I need more. But sadly, uh Sirius shows up. What a cool scene where he's like, Harry, you got to screw off, buddy. I got this. But there's two of them, so the two of them fight together. Calls him James, mm-hmm. which I think his name is James, right? He's just thinking it's his dad. I think it was like a Sirius just said that just because, just to give you like, oh, he th- he just, it, Harry reminds me of James oh. so much. He just says James. Yeah. 
It's like when my dad, when my mom calls me Jimmy. Her brother's yeah. name's Jimmy, which that guy, I'm sorry if he's like me. If my mom thinks he acts like me or act like him, we're both screwed. So <laughs> feel bad for him. Uh, but yeah, you get like, it's the worst death. I mean, like you said earlier, it's unceremoniously. Yeah. Out of Kadabra. Yeah, Bellatrix, Bellatrix hits him, oh. with, and she actually says it. So just to let you yeah. know, like this, this is what that spell is. And he's just gone. But Harry chases after, and he's going. He's, he's going to kill her. That tang man. Um. Well, he hits I her. With, he hits her with the Cruciatus. So he's going to he's going to torture her for a minute, but casts it, but doesn't do anything with it. Yeah. And it hits her. He does nothing. And Voldemort gets in his head. He's like, you got to mean it, Harry. I didn't realize he was in this movie. I thought he wasn't. So I was like, oh, shoot. That's right. He's at the end. He's in it. You get like, the Dumbledore Tom Riddle fight. Yeah. Which, rad. Great stuff. This Tom is rad. Dumbledore um, doesn't have to use. He's just like. Whoosh. He doesn't. I got problems. Verbalize. Got problems. He just does it. Got problems. What problem? He's got the elder wand. Yeah. Hey, how was he just not winning? I don't know. <laughs> Is the elder wand supposed <sighs> to defeat everybody? Yeah, dude. It's like a big old wiener slap. Well, I don't think he wants to kill. No, he, he, he doesn't. He, well, he knows he can't be the one that kills Voldemort. So yeah, he's, he's that, not trying to this kill is, him. Dude, this is where this whole series gets murky with Dumbledore because he knows how it ends. Yeah. He knows what has to happen. He's laid, Snape knows what has to happen. He's laid out like a 15, 16 year plan at this point. And yeah. Yeah, we're counting down the end. Yeah. With Harry. But they uh, have a, a great wizard fight. Uh, God, so good. I mean, it, it was like it was like watching the Obi-Wan Kenobi show when Darth Vader and Obi-Wan fight at the end. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, man, I've been waiting for something cool again. This is rad. This yeah. is good. It's just like, give it. Uh, they blow that junk up, though. And then um, Fudge, which, like, what a sick name, dude. Fudge Packer. <laughs> <laughs> like, he is back. Yeah, because he sees and... him for five minutes. And then Voldemort whew, disappears. And it's like, yeah, dude, we've been saying it. Yeah, now the paper's like, turns out we're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and Dumbledore's returned as, as the headmaster. But uh, Harry finally talks to him. Mm -hmm. And you kind of get that thing. Where, like, what a good build up for the next couple movies. Of, I think you really understand now. Dumbledore knows more. Yep. But he cares. But he and they're having a hard, and Harry's having a hard time trying to figure out. And, and it's like, prophecy. you want Dumbledore to tell him. But you know he's he's keeping everything back f for to protect Harry, and it's like yeah, you kind of identify with both Dumbledore and Harry in that moment. Harry's like, just fucking tell me, just tell me. <laughs> yeah, and I think the whole like, which he gets way Dumbledore more. He does get answers. Care about Harry? Movie. Yeah, like does Dumbledore Harry care about Harry? Harry, Harry. <laughs> does Dumbledore <laughs> care about Harry, or does he care about? The end. I, it's both. I think he. he yeah. It's the fate of the world, really. And I think he cared about the fate of the world, and then started to care about Harry, and that makes it hard. That's really what that first scene in the Deathly Hallows is about, where Harry tries yeah. to leave everyone and go off on his own. And it's like not this whole thing isn't about just about you, Harry. <laughs> it's yeah. There's you more. are you are what everyone is after, but it's not about you. It's about everybody. That's pretty much the end. Yeah, that's, sucker. that's it. It's a good um, one. Emma, Wat Emma Watson considered not being a part of this franchise before this. Really? She was going to quit and said it'd be really awkward if she didn't stick around. Yeah, it would have been. Um, what? Stephen King said that... Uh, Umbridge is the greatest villain of yeah. all time. Yeah, not of all time, but she's a great one. Uh, sorry, he says all time since Hannibal Lecter. Let me read that better. I'm trying to have any good trivia on that. I know that um, Ron 
And um, how am I drawing a blank on his name? Neville. They were banned from being five meters away from Alan Rickman's BMW because they spilled a milkshake in his car in the last movie. <laughs> you let teenagers in your car, bro. I mean, yeah, dude. What are you doing? Um, that's a good movie. Yeah. I mean, like, this is, you're going to hear me just say that. Like, I got nothing heavy to say. Like, it's just good. From here on out, it it's all good. The next one. Ooh. This one gets a solid nine. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Amateur, I don't mean amateur it. score with the you know point oh, but mm -hmm. I think I honestly think next week is a ten. Honestly, I do. This movie came out. I'm sorry, a the week, week the, in in the the movie next movie in a couple weeks. We'll be off next week. But. Yeah, this movie came out like a week before the Deathly Hollows book. Ooh. I just remember watching this movie that week it came out with my dad and then buying that book at Walmart three days early because they accidentally put it out. And it was just like, ah, yeah. It was a good, it was a really, really good time in life of mm -hmm. reading those books and the movies too, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's time to move on to uh, what you watching, reading, playing. Um, besides, you know, screwing with life. Um, <laughs> watching Bob's Burgers. Oh yeah, it's great. That's good. Um, weird anime. Watching Chainsaw Man. It's wild. It's a guy that transforms into a demon with chainsaws on his head and his arms. Yeah, it I believe is you've, crazy. you've you've mentioned this. Yep, still, still, still on board with it, man. It's pretty it's wild. Good. It's but, good. Um, I'm eagerly. I, I don't know the name of it. I think it's like 1899. It's a Netflix show. Uh, have you ever watched Dark? Uh, Do you like Stranger Things? Yeah. If you need a new TV show to watch, and you can put up with uh, overdubs or subtitles, there's a show on Netflix called Dark. I have heard of this. It's German. Yeah. It's one of the best things I've ever watched. Okay. It's it's it. it I. I have Stranger to, Things ish. It's I, time travel versus. Okay. Weird stuff. I have to dub it because I, I can't, can't stand subtitles. No, I do dub it. It's fine. I mean, people hate people hate it, but it's fine. Um, the people that made that, and it's the most, it's one of the most trippy shows I've ever watched. Dark. Okay. Like when you finish the third season, you legitimately feel uncomfortable. If I can make it through Squid Games, I think I can make it through that. Did you like Squid Games? I loved it. Okay, dude. Seriously, you're not watching anything. So watch the first episode of Dark. It is dark. It is a lot more creepy than Stranger Things. Not like spooky, scary skeletons. It's right. just like, oh, this is effed up. Okay. Um. Yeah. But the, the guys that made that, their new show came out. And it comes out tomorrow, actually. I forget we don't record on Thursdays now. Yeah. Wednesdays. Comes out tomorrow. So I'm, I'm going to watch that for sure. I'm, I'm stoked. Okay. I mean, it is so... Dark was so... I don't know. I, it opened my eyes more to foreign stuff. Like, you know, I like anime, so I don't care about that gap, but actual live stuff. Like, that was a German show. I hope it was German. But, um, yeah. Do you got to watch that? I, I'd highly change everything. Okay. Watch Dark. Watch Dark and, uh, no. I was going to give you a warning, but I'm not going to. Okay. Yeah. Don't give me a warning. It'll ruin it. Okay. It, yeah. 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 Just be be ready for anything, I, buddy. Is all I gotta say. Uh, I'm gonna watch uh three thousand years of longing after this. Oh my gosh, dude! You gotta tell me how it is. Cause I'm I bullet train three thousand years of longing. Uh, what's the everywhere all at once? Everything everywhere all at once is great as well. I got to see all three of those, man. My my work life balance sucks that I can't watch crap. Wakanda so, Forever was also was it good? It's good stuff. Guy I work with was like, uh, he was at Disney last week mm. while the hurricane was. Oh there. man, 
<laughs> and he's like, yeah, it sucked, but uh, they went to a 40X theater to watch Wakanda Forever. Uh huh. He was like, I came out of that so wet and so sore because the chair's like, it's a full 40 experience oh. with the, the seats. Yeah. Yeah, that's stupid. Yeah, but I need I need yeah. to go watch that, man. I need to go to the theaters just to escape. Na- and- Namor is, or Namor, as he's called in this movie, is like probably one of I've heard it. He, yeah. The actor does very good, is very good at his job. And <laughs> I, I, I like that they, uh, the character. I've seen some articles that are like, here's Killmonger, here's Namor, better. Yeah. Yeah, Killmonger is still great, but this guy is like really good. I, I know this is weird. Watching Harry Potter is weird too because people are dead. It's so hard to uh, process. Think about like Black Panther is not there. Yeah, like Chadwick Boseman's dead. They but they they handle that very well. Good for them. Yeah, I got to see that. I, I didn't see Black Panther in theaters. I just, I never had time. I watched it. I saw it twice in theaters. I wish I did. Um, apart from the last CGI sequence. I feel I feel like this movie is shot better and looks better than the first movie. And I think it's what, equal in What story phase is this? This is the end of phase four. Um, is it better than the other phase four crap? Yeah. I've been impressed. I mean, I've enjoyed all the movies, I've, but I'm, yeah, I haven't been like, "Oh man, that was amazing." This is the first movie where it's like, "Man, that was really good." Oh. Th- I liked Thor: Love and Thunder. Um, wasn't blown away. I just really liked it. Um, yeah. Same thing with Multiverse of Madness. Yep. But and Spider Man, uh, I loved. Eternal, I, I did love. Yeah. It, Eternals was a doo doo. Um. Yeah, speaking of which, we did a podcast on that. We so did. If we have an episode of that. <laughs> um, so that's it for this week. Um, we're off next week for Thanksgiving in America, at least. That's what yeah, you jerks. <laughs> <laughs> we we um, eat Indians on Thanksgiving. So after in two weeks, we'll be back with the Half Blood Prince. Um, so if you have a suggestion for a movie we should do, you can send that to Second Take Movies Pod at gmail.com. You can find us on all the social medias at Second or no, just on Instagram. Never mind. Instagram at Second Take Movies. Um and for Jake, I will say we'll see you next time. <laughs>